Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. Mystery Theater. I'm Hyman Brown. We have a little diversion for you that may both relax and intrigue you. It deals with the subject of dreams. A great deal too much, I think, is said these days about facing reality. It's considered a great virtue to face reality, while to spend time dreaming, fantasizing, we call it now, is thought to be shameful, if not downright sinful. Personally, I would not care to live if I could not dream. Would you? I saw you coming out of her room. Did you now? Did you really? I won't have it, I tell you. I won't stand for it. Well, what do you propose to do about it? I don't know. But I'll do something. Like what? Uh, I'll tell her who you really are. Oh, come off it. Now, stop talking nonsense. You don't really know who I am. Our mystery drama, The Stuff of Dreams, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Bryna Rayburn and Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Back to the subject of dreaming which is what our story concerns itself with. Not the dreaming we do at night, which is somehow considered respectable, because we think we do not control it. No, no. This story is about the dreaming we do while we are wide awake. You uh, sure you got the right address? I believe so. 111? That's right. Mrs. Tipton... That's right. Well, she ain't going to come to the door. Well, why do you say that? Well, she never does. Nobody ever does. Well, somebody will today. You think so, huh? Well, you're wrong. You'll find out. I uh, lived at 113 all my life, born there. I was here when she moved in 20 years ago. Moved in and never came out. If it weren't for Mrs. Hutchins, the cleaning lady comes once a week. Uh, we think she was dead. But Mrs. Hutchins has her own key. Mrs. Tipton, don't let her in. You can stand there for a hundred years. She'll never come to the door. I really don't think it's any of your business. Well, I'm just telling you what I know. Look, I happen to be answering an advertisement. See? Here it is. I cut it out of the morning paper. It's about a job. Something happened to Mrs. Hutchins? The cleaning lady? Well, she was here yesterday. It's not an advertisement for a cleaning woman. What's it for? doesn't say exactly, but there's no mistake about the address or the name. Mrs. Hilda Tipton, 111 West. That's her, all right. So, see? You're the first person I've ever seen ringing that bell in 20 years. Must be something up inside there. Well, I really wouldn't know. Oh, wait till I tell my sister. Will she get a kick out of this? Oh, hey, you mind if I stand here till she opens the door? That is, if she ever does open the door which still remains in a doubt. I do mind. I want this job. The money's very good, and it won't help my chances if she sees you standing there gawking at her. Why well, not gawking. I got every right to be here. Just walking my dog, that's all. I do it every day, three times a day. Trixie and I always stop in front of 111 for a couple of minutes. We got a right. Well, just the same. If you wouldn't mind... Okay, okay. Trixie's all finished anyway. Come on, Trix. We go home. We ain't wanted here, that's plain. Thank you. We can watch from our porch anyway, can't we, old girl? Sure we can. Oh, 
Uh, oh. Well, what, what was that? Oh, that sun. That sun so bright. Well, c- c- come inside. Come in, for goodness sake. You did say three o'clock, yes. didn't you? I mean, uh, that, that's what I understood on the phone. Didn't you say... Go ahead. Go on into the drawing room. Go ahead. It takes me a little time. At first, uh, I thought that maybe you weren't home yeah. or I'd made a mistake or something. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh. oh. What a beautiful room. Oh, how perfectly beautiful. Well, I, I was on the phone when you rang the bell. It takes me a while to get around. All this weight I have to carry. I, I have a glandular condition. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Well, go on, sit down. No, no, not there. That's a priceless antique. I'm sorry. Well, where shall I... Any place... Uh, I'm going to lie down on the couch myself. You don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. I'll, I'll just stand. If you want to. See, I I have a heart condition, and my weight problem makes it worse. So I have to be careful. Well, now, you you came about the position. Yes. Uh, what, what? What's your name? You... You told me on the phone, but I've forgotten. I, I, I talked to a lot of girls. My name is May Cook. May Cook? Yes? That's not a very imaginative name. Oh, well, it's mine. It's the only one I've got. Well, you you could change it to Maybell, something like that. Well, I don't really want to. Oh, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. I, I myself changed my name from Hilda to Hildegard, but... Uh, didn't seem to make much difference because I never see anybody or correspond with anybody or, or have anything to do with anybody, really. Not ever? Not anybody? Not since my husband divorced me and took my son away from me. Oh, that's awful. Oh, I am sorry. Not at all. No, I, he gave me plenty of money and I... I bought this house and furnished it. But even so, to leave you alone like that... Oh, I never think about it. Or them. They got in the way. Got in the way? In the way of what? My kind of life. Mrs. Tipton, (laughs) it's really hard to see where I'd fit in. Uh, I'm a trained social worker. That's how I make my living. At least... That was how I made my living. I was discharged six months ago. They were cutting down and... Well, I haven't been able to find anything in my field and I'm running short of money, so... So I'm willing to take almost any kind of job if it's respectable. Look, I'm not going to ask you to do anything you wouldn't ordinarily do. Do you need a secretary? Something like that? I think I could manage that, maybe. Or... Or be a companion. Oh, I don't want a secretary or a companion. Why would I? I never do anything, and I... I prefer being alone. Well, what is it that you do want? I want somebody to live for me. To... To live... For you? Precisely. (laughs) Well, I... I really don't know what that means, Mrs. Tipton. I never heard of anybody living for somebody else. Well, I shall explain. I don't pretend that my life in this house is living... Not what most people would call living. But what do they know? Nothing. Actually, my life here is infinitely superior to what they would call living. Well, what, what precisely do you do, Mrs. Tipton? I dream. Just dream, that's all? What do you mean, that's all? Oh, it's easy to see. You don't know much about dreaming. Well, you mean daydreaming? I know about that. I daydream sometimes. Everybody does once in a while. Yes, but how many make it a life's work? Oh, not many, I guess. Hardly anybody would be my guess. Well, people don't have the time. They can't afford it. I know I certainly can't. Ah, but I do have the time, and I can afford it. But it sounds strange. Of course it sounds strange. No one has the sensitivity or the imagination to withdraw completely into the life of fantasy. A life peopled with the oddest creatures doing the oddest things in the oddest way, saying incredible things, producing incredible sensations. You make it sound fascinating. 
But uh, I'm a very ordinary person, really. I, I, I don't think I could do anything like that. Of course you couldn't. And that wouldn't be what I'd require of you. Well, I think we really ought to discuss that. You said you wanted me to live for you. I want you out in the world, what people call the real world, living what they call a, a real life. And that's all? That's all. You're a social worker. You must have got around a lot. Well, some. Do you have a lover? There's a man I'm interested in. We're not... What you said. I'm, I'm just interested in him. My, but you're a proper little thing, aren't you? Well, never mind. I'd want you to go on dating whatever you've been doing with this man and whatever else you do with your time. And that's all? And report back to me. Once a week, tell me what you've done. I, I, I can't believe that that's all I'd have to do. You, you'd you pay me for doing that? Yes. $300 a week. That's a great deal of money for just... Just living and telling you about it. Uh, I just can't see why you'd want to pay me for doing just that. Oh, if you insist on an explanation... Well, I'd I... like to understand if I can. Oh. Very well. You see, I'd be better at the job, I think, if I, if I understood a mm -hmm. little. Well, you see, I'm thoroughly convinced that I've created the perfect life for myself. I live surrounded by beauty, charm. It is a beautiful house. All the senses are satisfied here. <laughs> Do you smell the perfume in this room? Yes, it's lovely. I have it changed once a month. You see those draperies? Pure silk from Thailand. One hundred dollars a yard. Oh. And they are due to be changed shortly. When you change them, do you just throw the others away? Oh, you'd like to have them, wouldn't you? Well, perhaps if you're a very good girl. Well, they're so lovely. Everything in this house is lovely. Except me. Oh, Mrs. Tipton. Nobody please. weighing close to 300 pounds could be considered lovely, but it doesn't matter. Because I have my dreams. And in my dreams, I weigh exactly 110. And my hair grows to my waist and is a light auburn in color. And my feet are small and narrow. And my eyes are clear and bright. And my fingers are long and tapering. Oh, well, never mind. The point is that in my dreams, I am the loveliest thing on earth. And the loveliest things happen to me. And why do you... That's been so my life for 20 years. And I've adored every second of it. But now... Well, I... I'm starting to grow older. It's sad, but I... Well, I, I'm growing older, and it's... It's harder than it used to be to... To dream my beautiful dreams. But everybody grows older, Mrs. Tipton, eventually. I don't intend to. No, no. I mean to go on living in my dreams until the very end. If there ever is an end. But there has to be, doesn't there? I mean, for everybody. Not for me. I still don't see what you want me to do. I mean, I don't see what possible help I could be to you. I need food for my dreams. Food? They're starting to grow stale, my dreams. Repetitious. I've dreamed each one of them a million times. I, I need new ones. But can't you just make them up? No, I can't. I need some contact with life as it's lived by others. You know, sometimes lately I've... I've had the sensation that I was... I was melting into my dreams, that... I was vanishing into them. That I was becoming nothing but my dreams. Well, what I need now is to build a little bridge between me and the outside world. And since I clearly can't do this myself, I... I must have someone do it for me. And that's what you want me to do? Build a, a bridge for you? You think you can? I can try. I'd like to try. Hello, Eddie. Well, hello, Miss.
Miss Cook. How are you? How should I be? I know it must be hard for you. Uh, I've done time before. Oh, I feel so bad. It's my fault, really, that you're here. Well, so you turned me in. You did your duty. You were uh, a good citizen. Yes, but... So you feel bad. No, Eddie. You know I take a special interest in you. You know that. Oh, yes, I know that. You haven't had an easy life. You know, anybody who's had what you'd call an easy life? I don't, Miss Cook. <laughs> you have to call me Miss Cook. I thought we were getting to be friends. Well, you know, something I, uh, I forgot your first name. It's May. May. I'll, I'll call you uh, Maisie, okay? <laughs> well, okay. At least it's better than Maybell. Maybell? What kind of a name is that? A woman I interviewed about a job yesterday. She thought I should change my name to Maybell. <laughs> oh. Needless to say, I declined. Although I must admit, if she'd insisted, I'd have done it. The job pays so well. Wait, well, you, you got a new job? Well, it's very strange. I don't know how it's going to work out. Well, now, wait a minute. Say, it's legal, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It's perfectly legal. <laughs> okay, so what's the job? What does it pay? Well, you're not going to believe $300 a week. Oh, you're kidding. I'm not kidding. This woman, I don't know if she's crazy or what. She lives in this beautiful house. All this beautiful furniture, rugs, pictures. She never has any company. She never goes out. Why not? She doesn't want to. Twenty years ago, her husband divorced her, and he got custody of their little boy. So she bought this gorgeous house, and she lives there. Doing what? Dreaming. She sleeps all the time? No, I think she means daydreaming, making up things. Well, so what does she need you for, to help her make up things? Well, she wants me to live for her. Uh, how are you supposed to do that? She says that all I have to do is live my normal life and once a week come and tell her about it. What's to tell? Well, she thinks if she has some sort of contact with the outside world, she thinks that would help her with her dreams. Oh, that's what she needs, uh, help with her dreams. <laughs> and I get $300 a week. <laughs> isn't that crazy? <laughs> well, isn't it? Say something. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. What about? I uh, come up for parole next week. I, I think it'll go through. They practically promised me. Yes. Now, what are you going to do when you get out? Well, I told them I had a dishwashing job, and I do. Where are but... you going to live? Yeah, there's some flop house, I guess. Well, you'll get a better job. I have great faith in you, Eddie. And if there's anything I can do to help, you know you can count on me. Maisie, there's one thing you could do to help. Well, what's that? When I get out of here, let me move in with him. Eddie, I... I, I, I just for a little while, till I get back on my Eddie, feet. Eddie, I, I don't know. I, look, I, just... I, 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 I don't mean shack up together. I mean, just, just let me sleep on the couch or the floor, anything. Well... It'd, I... it'd mean everything to me. Well... For a while, maybe. Okay. You can stay with me for a little while. Dear sweet Mother Nature, at whose shrine we all pretend to worship and whose dictums we constantly violate, what oddity she does create. Perhaps to avenge herself on us for our misdeeds. Perhaps to punish us for our hypocrisy. Perhaps to show her contempt for our stupidity. Whatever her reasons, it is an undeniable fact that here and there are specimens of her handiwork that shock, terrify, and appall us. Mystery Theater will continue shortly with Act Two. Our tender little heroine, Miss May Cook, has secured a position with Mrs. Hilda Tipton, wealthy recluse. In return for a handsome salary, 
Miss Cook has only to lead her ordinary life and report weekly to her employer its mundane contents. To be, in Mrs. Tipton's words, her bridge to the outside world. For Miss Tipton spends all her time dreaming. Just dreaming. While in another part of town, altogether, is a man called Eddie, who spends his time in prison also dreaming. Dreaming of the day of his parole. Got the job, didn't you? Uh, she ought to give you your own key. I know she doesn't like answering the doors. Uh, Mrs. Hutchins has her own key. She lets herself in. So why don't she give you your own key? <laughs> You're getting to be as snooty as she is. Come on, Trixie. Let's not hang around where we're not wanted. We can always watch from the porch. Oh, oh, come on in, May. Hurry up. Looks like rain. Terrible day. Oh, well, go on in. Take your coat off. Go on in. I hope to goodness you've got something to tell me. Something with a little spice to it. I don't mind telling you. What you tell me about the world out there makes me glad I don't live in it. Oh, Move that pillow, will you? Which one? On the couch, the gold one I needed for my back. That's it. Oh, now, oh now, go ahead. Oh, there. Well, the oh. beginning of the week wasn't so very exciting. Oh. I bought some clothes. What kind of clothes? Well, a couple of shirtwaist dresses and... Shirtwaist dresses? Oh, they're very nice. Nice? I paid quite a lot of money for them. Oh, didn't you buy anything, you know, sexy? No, Nothing long and filmy and, you know, revealing. No, I've, I've never worn that sort of thing. But didn't you tell me you were in love with some man? Yes, that's true, I am. You wear shirtwaist dresses when you're with him? Alone with him, I mean? Well, he... he hasn't been in town lately. Where's he been? Away. Away where? Oh, you don't want to tell me. Okay. When's he coming back? Oh, he is back. He came back last night. Oh, good. So, <laughs> what, what did you do last night, the two of you? Well, we went out for dinner, seeing as it was his first night home. What did you eat? He had steak, I had fish. We both had salad and ice cream. Oh, Lord. Even the food you eat is dull. Don't you ever eat anything interesting? We used to go to a Chinese restaurant sometimes. Mm -hmm. I bet you ate chop suey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, after that splendid repast of steak and fish and ice cream, then what did you do, huh? Well, we went to a movie. What movie? The one in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, forget the name of it. Oh, May, you could make up a name. <laughs> Why would I do that? Well, you know I never go out of this house. I don't know one movie from another. So if you made up the name of a movie, I wouldn't know the difference. But why should I? Because you're lying. You never went to any movie. Not last night, not after your lover's been away out of town, whatever. No. I want the truth, young lady. I want the whole truth. You've been coming here, what is it, three weeks now, and you... You haven't said one word that was interesting. Near as I can tell, nothing happens out there in the world. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. But it's true. Nothing much does happen to me, Mrs. Tipton. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for an instant. I couldn't have been so wrong about but you. I, I never said that I was interesting or anything like that. I, I know, never... but there was something about you. I I heard it in your voice over the telephone. So, so sweet, so mild, so eager to please. And then when I met you, I, I could see it in your face. Well, I don't know what you could see. I'm just... Hunger. The yearning. You wanted my draperies, didn't you? Oh, but only if you were going to throw them out. Well, you'd take secondhand things if they were fancy, expensive. And and then there was your manner. The way you smiled and agreed with everything I said, even if I was rude. I knew you must have another side to you. What I saw couldn't be the whole of May Cook. There must be another part of her that was that was jealous and spiteful and angry. No, no and, I'm not. I'm and don't. guilty! Guilty of being spiteful and jealous and greedy. No, Mrs. Tipton. Yes, no. Miss Cook. Now, suppose you tell me about this lover of yours. Tell me all about him. What's his name? That'll do for a start. Eddie. Eddie what? 
You said he's been out of town. He's He's been in jail. In jail! In jail! Well, that's wonderful. In, in jail for what? What did he do? Well, he broke into somebody's apartment. Your apartment? No, no. Then how'd you get to know him? It was the apartment of a friend of mine. So when she had to go to court to identify him, I went with her. She was frightened, so I went Now, hold her. on. I remember enough of the world to know that when a person says it happened to a friend, it didn't. It happened to that very person. So, this Eddie didn't break into the apartment of a friend of yours, did he? He broke into your apartment, and that's how you met him. Am I right? Isn't that what happened? Yes. Of course. Of course. Now, how did he get in? Through the kitchen window. And you heard him moving around? Yes. What did he steal? Well, I... I... I didn't have very much. He, he, he took my mother's engagement ring and her wedding ring. I had a little cash, about $20. He took that. And what else? Oh, that's about all. I don't want to hear about... about all. I want to hear all. What else did he take? Nothing else. He took you, didn't he? I don't know what you mean. I mean he took you by force against your will... I mean, rape you, Ninny. He raped you, didn't no, he? No, he didn't. Why don't you admit it? Mrs. Tipton, I can't admit to something that never happened. Oh, oh you make me sick. <laughs> well, if that's so, perhaps I'd better not work for you any longer. And give up all that money? You need it. You know you do. Not that much. Look. Look. I want you to do one more thing for me. Then we can call it quits. I want you to bring this Eddie person here to my house. I want to meet him. I... I don't know if he'd want to come, Mrs. Tipton. You I... bring him. Tomorrow night. I'll expect you both. For dinner. I've had enough conversation for today. You can go now. Oh. Your money's on the little table by the front door. Thank you, Mrs. Tipton. Three one hundred dollar bills. Crispy new ones. Thank you, Mrs. Tipton. For once I got my money's worth. And I mean to get much more. Much. Much more. That's all you told her? That I spent part of a year in a slammer? Well, there wasn't anything else to tell. Well, it just doesn't add up. Well, what doesn't add up, Eddie? Well, that this old bag would want to meet me. I don't care how nutty she is or how lonely or how anything. That's not enough of a reason. No, 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 no. There's got to be something else. Yeah, I know what these biddies have on their minds. All the time they got it on their minds. Didn't she ask anything about that? About what? You and me. About sex, dummy. She didn't ask me. She told me. Told you what? That... That you raped me. Ah, I knew it. There had to be something. Well, of course, I, I said you didn't. Uh, then what? Then nothing. She got disgusted with me because I wouldn't say that you... Because I wouldn't say something happened that never happened. And so I said that maybe if that was the way she felt about me, maybe I better not work for her anymore. You said that? She didn't seem to care whether I quit or not. There was just one more thing she wanted me to do. And that was to bring you to her house tomorrow night for dinner. And you said you would? Well, I said I'd ask you. You don't have to go. What do you mean, I don't have to go? Oh, she's pretty weird. <laughs> I want to go. But, Eddie, I really believe Mrs. Tipton wants to think you raped me. I mean, I don't think she believed me at all when I said you didn't. Well, we can set her straight, can't we? Well, I don't think she wants to be set straight. Oh. <laughs> it was a nice job while it lasted. Oh, it isn't over yet. Oh, yes, it is. I've made up my mind. After tomorrow night, I'm never going near that house again. Yeah, now you're perfectly right. You, you're, you're not cut out for that job. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah, but me... Uh, I was tailor-made for that job. You? You mean you'd go to work for her? 
Why not? You said it was legal, didn't you? Yes, it's legal, but... Well, I can tell my parole officer I'm working for a rich lady who is uh, slightly eccentric. It'll sound great. Oh, Eddie, I don't know. Yeah, but I do know. Look, you made hash out of that job. No, I did. Yeah, but I won't, believe me. I'll make it into the best-paying job in the world. Oh, you just want the money, is that it? It... Not that I blame you. I wanted it, too. But, you see, it isn't worth it. Look... Here's the $300 that I got paid today. You take it. I really don't want it, and you need it, so you take it. You don't think it's the money I care about. Look, here. Three $100 bills. Hand them over. Here. Give me a match. What for? Never never mind. I I, I got one someplace. What do you want a match for? I got it. Eddie. Oh, you can't. Oh, don't do that. That's $300. Don't they burn pretty, though? Well, some people have money to burn, I guess. Not me. And nobody I know either. And even if we did have, I don't think we'd go ahead and actually do it. I mean, we'd think of something else. Anything else to do with it besides burn it. I mean to say, hundred dollar bills are legal tender, not legal tinder. Mystery Theater will be back shortly with Act Three. It is the next night now, and May is bringing Eddie to have dinner with Mrs. Tipton. Or is it the other way around? Is Eddie bringing May to the house of a woman he has never met? For contrary to May's expectations, Eddie jumped at the chance to meet May's employer, or more correctly, her former employer. For May fully intends to resign, and Eddie fully intends to take her place. It is now 7 o'clock, and May and Eddie are arriving at 111. Okay, keep the change. Well, well, well. Don't pay any attention to him. Well, who is he? He lives next door. Well, if I didn't expect to see you, not tonight. Remember, Eddie, this is the last time I'm going to come to this house. I got you. And with a man alongside you, too. Mrs. Tipton must be loosening up a bit. Am I right? Just ignore him. For 20 years, it was just Mrs. Hutchins went through that door. Then the young lady makes an appearance. Now, lo and behold, the young gentleman. Uh, Why don't you just go on home, huh? I live next door. Well, go there. Okay. Come along, Trixie. We'll sit on the front porch and watch what happens. Ah, there you are. I've been waiting Come in. Come in. Oh, that was the most delicious meal I've ever been privileged to enjoy, Mrs. Tipton. Uh, Better than prison food, Eddie. Well, I haven't always eaten prison food. I'll just bet you haven't. Oh, May, fetch Eddie another helping with the burnt almond mousse. Yes, Mrs. Tipton. Uh. Eddie, huh? you remind me of somebody. I, I can't think who. I... Uh, your husband, perhaps? Oh, heavens no. My husband was a stick. Your son? Well, considering I haven't seen my son since he was five years old. Now, now you're more like... like someone I've dreamed about. Is your dessert, Eddie? Well, I just set it down. Uh, when you've finished, maybe you'd like to see the rest of the house, Eddie. You've seen the first floor. Maybe you'd like to see the second floor. Oh, well, that would be a privilege. <laughs> my bedroom, I think, is my masterpiece. It's, it's in shades of beige at the moment. From ivory through parchment to ecru. Though I may change it. Uh, let, let me look at it first. Oh, I will, I will. I've never seen your bedroom, Mrs. Tipton. Uh, no, you haven't, have you? And I once promised to show it to you, didn't I? Yes. Well... Then we'll all look at it together. Eddie, finished your mousse? All finished. Oh. Oh. I really should have an elevator installed. These, these stairs are getting to be too much for me. 
Voilà. Entrez. Oh. Oh, how perfectly. How perfectly exquisite. That's oh. very nice. I commend your taste, Mrs. Tipton. <laughs> you really like it. Yeah, yeah, I really do. But but you said you were going to change it. Oh, I change everything regularly. I get tired after a while. I need new things, new colors, new textures. New sensations? Most of all, new sensations. Well, I uh, have some thoughts on how you could redecorate this room. Oh, have you indeed? Oh, I wouldn't change a thing. Who asked you? Oh, it's just an opinion. I'm interested in Eddie's opinion, not yours. Well, why don't you go downstairs and clean the table? Uh, yeah, wh- wh- why don't you? And uh, uh, wash the dishes. Well, I'd prefer to stay here. I wasn't hired to clear the table and wash the dishes. And nevertheless, just this once. This one time. Not this one time. Not any time. Uh, May, step outside with me for a minute, huh? Outside where? Wait, just outside in the hall. What for? Well, for a little conversation, that's all. Now, c- come on, come on, come on. After you. All right. Just for a few minutes. Now, look, I want five minutes alone with Mrs. Tipton. You really want to work for her? You want to do her living for her? I really want to. Eddie, you don't know what she's like. Oh, I know exactly what she's like. She's another one of those women. I've known them all my life. What women? Women like you. Oh, she's nothing like me. Not outside, but inside you're alike. You're the kind that likes criminals. You like everything about them. If I wasn't a criminal, you wouldn't like me. I wanted to help you. To understand you, to help you to understand yourself. I understand myself perfectly. I understand myself backwards, forwards, sideways. I, I'm, I'm bad, Maisie. Bad, no, bad, no, bad. No, not really. Yes, no. really, really, she understands it. That fat blob in there. I'm what she's been dreaming about all these years. Lust and lasciviousness and uncontrolled passion. Dreaming of a life where anything goes and the world belongs to the clever and the strong. No, I'd never lived that way. I've never dreamed about those things. Oh, yes, you have, baby. You haven't got the gumption to do anything for yourself. So you'll find somebody like me and pretend you want to change me. But you, you, you want to rehabilitate me. Isn't that what you call it? Well, I can't be rehabilitated, baby. I don't want to be. And that fat lady in there doesn't want me rehabilitated. She wants me just the way I am. So now if you'll excuse me. Eddie. Ah, Mrs. Tipton. Well, you've turned off all the lights. <laughs> the moonlight comes through the windows. Well, how romantic. Moonlight streaming through parchment silk. And where are you, Mrs. Tipton? Here, Eddie. Well, now, would you by any chance be in the big canopy bed, Mrs. Tipton? The, the big bed draped in ivory net? Silk net. But I can scarcely see you. <laughs> You can hear my voice. So I can, Hilda. Oh, call me Hildegard. You said I reminded you of someone. Someone I've known intimately. Well, suppose I light a match and you take a look at my face. Think who it is I remind you of. You ready? Oh, yes. Why? Why, I know you. I... I know you. You... Is it possible? Is what possible? That you are him. The the fiend. The arch-fiend. Am I? Oh, light another match. Look carefully at my face, Hildegard. Oh, is it possible? You're here... Here with me. And you are going to... To what? You're going to force yourself on me, aren't you? Oh, I know it. It's what I've dreamed of. Oh, light another match, my beloved. Your majesty. Your satanic majesty. I am your servant. Your... Your slave. What is that? The room is growing red. This... This fire... The bed is on fire! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Eddie, at the end of the 
Patsy. Oh, Mrs. Hutchins. Mrs. Hutchins. I'm in a hurry. Oh, terrible thing about the fire. Terrible. That beautiful house. Though I've never been inside, of course. Have they uh, been questioning you, the police and the fire people? Yes. Well, they'll get around to me later. Me and my sister. No doubt. We were the ones who called the fire department, you know. Didn't uh, they tell you? No. Oh, yes. My sister and I heard this sort of explosion. And then we saw smoke coming out of one of the upstairs rooms. Mrs. Tipton's gorgeous bedroom. Is that what room it was? Yes. Then she must have started it herself. I wouldn't know about that. Well, nobody got out, I understand. Nobody. Where was Mrs. Tipton at the time? In her bed. They found her there? Yes. And uh, uh, the young girl, Miss Cook, I believe her name was? Outside the door. The door to the bedroom? Yes. And the door was locked. Why, the poor girl must have been trying to get in to save Mrs. Tipton. It looks that way. But where was the man? What man? The man who came to the house with the young lady. There was no man. Well, of course there was a man. He drove up about dinner time with the young lady, and they went into the house together. Now, he never came out because my sister and I watched the house back and front. From that moment on, we were so surprised to see a man going in. No man was found in the house. Well, wait till they get to questioning me. I'll tell them about the man that went in and never came out. You'll only be making a fool of yourself. Well, it must have been the man that set the fire. The fire started in the bedroom, and the door to the bedroom was locked. And no body of any man was found, so there... Now, I've got to be getting on home. You can tell your fanciful tale to the police if you want to. But how did it happen? How did the fire start? It was the work of the devil. He has sly ways, the devil has. Very sly ways. I'll be back shortly with a final thought. final word is given to the one who says it best. Master William Shakespeare, born 1564, died 1616. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Bryna Rayburn, Jack Grimes, and Dan Ocko. Associate Director, Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, then, pleasant dreams.